Harry, mate, four weeks in. Yep. Leicester Tigers, how's it been? Yeah, really good. It's been a uh, big four weeks. I seem sort of feel like I've been doing a pre-season since about uh, <laughs> November last year. I think as do a few people. Um, but it's been awesome, yeah. Been really, really tough. Um, but we're sort of getting a bit closer to games now. and Yeah, exciting times. Let's get the fun part out of the way. Righto. Your name. Yep. Talk me through it. How's it been? How's uh, it been with the boys here? How's it been in life? Yeah, it's been been fairly consistent. So I've uh, been <laughs> called Harry Potter my whole life, and Harry Potter's uh, been a franchise my whole life, so pretty used to it. But uh, the boys here have been pretty good um, until some uh, interesting videos circulated on uh, social media <laughs> posted by yourself, and then uh, I had a few people feeling sorry for me, but no, so it was actually you, a good laugh. Are your parents big fans, or is that...? Definitely not. No, uh, they want they they want to make that quite clear. <laughs> they're uh, they're not big fans, but uh, uh, yeah, I was named year of the book, and then it sort of gradually got bigger. Wow. Um, and then sort of one or two, and it was kind of cool. There was a book called Harry Potter, and then three or four, and a movie, and all of a sudden it was the biggest thing in the world. More like yeah, a bit more down that route. Jesus, magical mate, Good. magical story. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Could have changed my name, but I, yeah, wasn't going out that route. I can't wait till you cross for that first try, and whatever <laughs> the commentator chooses. You must have a try celebration in you to do it. N- no. No. <laughs> no, we're staring well clear of that. So I've got to ask, obviously, yep. there's a very Australian accent, but you are English qualified. I certainly am. Yeah. Um, the sunburn helps. Bit confusing, yeah, I was just, just mentioning that. The, uh, <laughs> the accent might be a bit of a confusion for me being English qualified, but... Being the only Aussie or any person out there that seems to be wearing sun cream at training and it not even working <laughs> reaffirms my, my Englishness. So obviously the opportunity came. Um, yeah. You're in Melbourne yeah. at the Rebels. No Super Rugby happening. Can you talk us through how the opportunity popped up and, and what was your initial feeling? Um, yeah, pretty crazy time to be, be moving across the world and even thinking about that. <laughs> but um, the opportunity sort of popped up and I thought... Um, um, it was always something that I wanted to do, come and play Premiership Rugby and um, sooner than maybe I expected to come over here, but I thought there's going to be so much rugby coming up this year. It's been a bit of a dud year with a lot of rugby being called off. Yeah. Um, so at some stage I feel like come uh, October, November, we're just going to be inundated with the rugby. So yeah, you're gonna be very exciting. Back. And then Leicester Tigers, obviously. It was sort of around the time I, I left the UK that Leicester was such a... Um, formidable club and so hated by everyone else just because yeah. they were so good um, I think they were winning European Cups and Premierships about about sort of 2010-11 when I left so um, in my mind yeah very successful um, good club to be at obviously the club you come from is well known to you and I in particular it's yep. not the most well known club in the world but it's a, a pretty big club in terms of Australian rugby isn't it yeah, well, my amateur club, Sydney Uni, yeah. um, and then was at the Rebels, but the amateur club, Sydney Uni, um, in a lot of ways, similar to Leicester Tigers. Obviously, Leicester Tigers is a professional and, and much bigger club, but Sydney Uni sort of resonates with that hard-working, unbelievably tough, um, really sort of driven group of players, which I think is very similar from what I can work out to Leicester Tigers. Like Training has been tougher than any training I've done before, um, but very similar in some ways to Sydney Uni. And no one likes Uni? No one likes Uni. From what I can work out, no one really likes Leicester Tigers yeah. either, but there's plenty of positives to take out of that, as yeah. I learned in Sydney. It's good from the inside. Obviously, a couple of your, I guess, familiar faces for you. Yeah. Rob Taylor, obviously, already here. Um, and then Guy Porter dropped in. He was a, was he a former roommate of yours? Yeah, he was. I lived with Guy for a year and played... Uh, so you've got some stories. A few, few seasons with him. I've got some stories about Guy. Are you um, want to share them? Yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. See how he goes. We'll see. Um, what can you yeah. tell people about Guy? Because he, he's another one who, like yourself, pops yep. up and he's, he's got a decorated career down in yep. Oz, but maybe not known to Tigers fans. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sort of going around uh, circles in Sydney and Australia. Like He's a very impressive um, rugby player and just super competitive. Um, great person to play with and, and the kind of bloke that you want to watch play. Like He just loves winning and, and that's very Sydney Uni-esque and, and I think it's going to bode well with 
what Steve's trying to do here with the Tigers. And he loves the gym. He does love the gym. Yeah. Um, he also loves social media photos of him in uh, a small hoodie that you, <laughs> you did for him. I've stitched up so far. Yeah, well, you could do with posting me in a picture of a small hoodie on or something. And then Robert slash Rod Taylor. Yeah, Rod Taylor. Tell us about him. Tell um, us, what is it about Rob? Because obviously you, I assume, would yeah. have seen the opportunity to continue to work with him as another perk of coming here. Yeah. Um, I mean, of the exposure I've had with various coaches, um, I, I think he's right up there. He's only sort of just started out in his coaching career, I suppose, but another guy that is super competitive, just wants to do anything it takes to win, um, and incredibly detailed um, about all that. And again, likes going, going and putting the boys through the hard yards, maybe not doing the hard yards like us players, but he understands that that's what we need to do, which is, which is awesome for a coach. Obviously, rugby's only a couple of weeks away, like you were mentioning. Um, I know you guys have been getting flogged, like you were saying, in training. Yeah. But it, it appears that some rugby started to creep in now in Phase 2 training without, obviously, giving away things. What have you made so far of that transition into rugby training and how the squad's adapted? Well, I mean, starting off, we uh, met Alan. Well, I met him on the 1st of July, <laughs> and it was uh, it was a grim start to uh, pre-season. <laughs> I suppose that's how it should be, but it was... It was really tough, so it's nice to sort of be transitioning into a bit more rugby and, and being able to get our hands on the ball and do contact with all the sort of restrictions at the moment. Um, but it's all looking pretty positive. It's um, a bit of a clean clean slate, new yeah. coaches. Steve's new, Rob's new, Alad's new, a fair, fair few new players as well. So um, it's, all, it's all being pretty positive and, and certainly the boys are heading in the right direction, I think. Winger, is that your only position or are you capable of bouncing around the back line? Um, yeah, I've sort of played wing mostly in the last year, but prior to that I was played 13 and, and 12, so yeah. I think I can slot in there, maybe if I get a bit more practice there. There's a pretty big winger who arrived not long after you. Yeah. Do you sometimes look across the pitch and think, we are the same position? Yeah, yeah, we uh, did our first contact session with Namani today, and it was something else, he was in there picking and going, and... <laughs> And doing all that stuff, which I thought I could do, but I thought actually uh, I might leave that to him for let someone else do it today. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then I guess finally, obviously, Welford Road. We might not have crowds. Yeah. In that first instance, but you must know a little bit about the history of that place and what it's like when it's jam packed. Yeah, definitely. I have uh, only been there once. We had a we had a meeting there a couple of weeks ago, but even without people, unbelievable looking place, and and I can't wait for that to well to play in it even without people. But when there's 20 or 1,000 people in there, it's going to be something pretty special, I can imagine. Cheers, mate. Awesome.